I'm Alex. And I'm Teddy. And I'm Spencer. And this is BioPhoenix here. And I'm Malta Master. And I'm VG Mashup. And I am the SNES Mapper. And we are the Buttmappers. Hey, the Buttmappers. <laughs> Bring the banjo out. <laughs> Hold on, let me just go grab my copy of banjo. There you go. <laughs> Welcome to the Button Mappers, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very highly intellectual discourse. We've brought out some of the finest. Not only do you have the Button Mapper crew of Alex. Alex Hi. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Sorry. And Spencer. Hi. Sorry. And of course, me, Majority. But you also have special guests, Bio Phoenix. Hey, I'm here, guys. Malta Master. That's me. What's up? What's up? <laughs> VG mashup. Yep, you guys have to put up with me too. Just mashing you right in there. <laughs> and the SNES mapper. Thank you guys for the invite once again. Looking forward to this episode. Absolutely. This will be a very special episode because we picked games that are special to us. What is the best game that you played this year? AKA Goaty. I'm sorry, Teddy. Is this not the Game of the Year Awards? And are you not a host? Oh, go ahead, take at, over. At the Game of Year. No, go ahead. No, that's fine. <laughs> Talk As to us about the we... Game of the Year Awards, Alex. <laughs> Welcome to the Button Mappers Game of the Year Awards, the biggest event in, in gaming history. We have some of the most pristine gamers here to talk about the best games of the year. Not just of the year, of all time. There you go. That's a pretty good Teddy impression. I liked it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> be here all year. Um, I, I just, I would like to thank Teddy real quick uh, for putting, you know, and Alex helped too, but put you guys put a lot of this together. I'm really bad at the networking stuff, so... You guys, great job getting all these people here. It's amazing. I've never seen something so big like this before. It's, it's hilarious because you're from the Itch Network. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just just to let everyone know, Spencer takes care of the payroll. These guys, the other guys, just do the invite. So thank you, Spencer. Yeah, Amon's trying to stay hired, I can see. Very wise. I don't know how that's going to go for him later. With his attitude. I'm actually still waiting on my... Uh... My, my paid leave. I've been uh, having to sell games to you know make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> but excellent. Yeah, guys, this has been great. And everyone who's a guest here has been a guest on the show before. So that's excellent. Actually, at the time of recording this, these guys haven't seen the episode with Malta Master, but you will soon. It is a, in the majority words, classic. With that being said, let's talk about some classics. What is the best game that you played this year? What is the game award? What is the Alex Award, a.k.a. Oh. Turbo Zone? The, Turbo. Turbo. The Turbo Award. And I think only one game this year that I played can get the Turbo Award. And it's not Crash Bandicoot 4. I know that's what people are going to say. I know that's what Terry thinks I'm going to say. Um, poor Terry couldn't be here today. Um, can we get a moment of silence for Terry, everybody? Yeah, let's do that. Let's just be shut up, Spencer. It's a moment of silence. <laughs> All right, Terry. Right now, we're doing a moment of silence for you. Spencer, shut up. <laughs> All right, out of our appreciation for Terry, we're gonna hold a moment of silence. So, everybody, while we're doing this moment of silence, if you could please not make any noise. <laughs> Fuck up. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I should, me, I should be my gag. <laughs> all right, all right. Whatever. The moment's passed. Um. So, what game is my game of the year? What game did I play this year that really stuck with me? Um, and I've played a lot of games. I played a lot of new releases, a lot of old games, a lot of games that took me a while to get through, like Final Fantasy VII. That could have very well been one, but I played a game this year that I haven't talked about on the show yet. That I I never stopped playing this year. And that game is Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. It's a uh, 2D fighting game in the set in the Power Rangers series, and it's fucking brilliant. I thought it was going to be like some licensed garbage, 
and it's more akin to like a Marvel versus Capcom style game. And it's very fun, very fluent, easy to pick up and play. And I have been playing it literally all year on my Switch. Just nonstop. I talked to Teddy. I'm not like we were doing Final Fantasy Seven. I was like, I should really be, be playing Final Fantasy Seven, but I'm playing this Power Rangers game. <laughs> and he's like, well, maybe you could play that after you finish Final Fantasy Seven. And I was like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if I can stop playing this, um, it's just been super addictive, fun. Uh, it's got great online play, and it's just overall sick fighting game. And I mean, like that that huge and the Power Rangers. Like I liked it as a kid, but like, I, Jesus, this is a, a well made fighting game. Would you say it's better than the Genesis fighting game? Definitely. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I played it too. I actually covered it in one of my Hidden Gems videos for the PlayStation 4, and I, I would agree. It is a pretty good, solid 2D fighter. And for a licensed game, that's that's pretty impressive. So How it many, is a hidden, it, it's a hidden gem? I covered it. I mean, call it what you want. I mean, it's yeah. the game of the year now. It used to be a hidden gem. Not anymore. Metal, metal mashup, got it. <laughs> metal mashup. <laughs> How many hours did you put into it? Because the Switch kind of tracks the, the hours. Do you, um, do you... I haven't checked in a while, but if I had to guess, I would say close to 20 now. I put into it. You know, it's, it's a fighting game, so, you know, it's a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. there's not really a lot to do. You know, it's like play online, play the arcade, or play the story. But I play a lot of it online. And uh, it's also one of the fighting games. I think why, why I, I really enjoy it is because I'm actually pretty good at it. And... I like fighting games, but a lot of times when I go online, I get my ass handed to me. So this one has been really um, fun because I, I feel like I understand this one really well. So, Who's the best? Who is the best? Um, it's RJ from Power Rangers uh, Jungle Fury. Thank you. So is it, is it like a jumble of all the Power Rangers? Yeah, it's like a crossover event. It's got for the like the original series, Mega Force, Jungle Fury, Samurai, a bunch of the different uh, Power Rangers series all together. Uh, even like one of the guys from the movie. Like, I tried. Like, I tried watching Power Rangers again like five years ago. I just saw like a VHS at my grandpa's house, and I put it in, and it was so awful. Like, I it love was... Power Rangers. It's like it's cheesy as hell, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the thing is that like it's like all the garbage I like. It's like it's like an episode of Saved by the Bell, and then halfway through it becomes like a Godzilla movie, you know, or something like that. It's just like super corny and fun, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, what? I know there's like a big confusing history about like how it got made into the West, but that's a whole other story that in itself. <laughs> but. What's so, yeah. the subtitle of the game? What's what? The uh, subtitle of the game? Does it have? Like... The... Yeah, yeah, Battle for the Grid. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I think it's produced by by Inway, um, and they've actually done some work with Capcom recently. So there's been talk of like Ryu crossing over as DLC or something. I'm like, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was my game of the year, guys. Cool. Are you really hmm. trying to tell me this was better than Mario and Sonic at the Rio Grande? Fuck, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I should have picked Crash 4, but like, I, I, I'm not done with it, so I don't want to pick it yet. So you're done with Power Rangers? No, but I've, it's a fighting game, and I've I've played enough into like to know everything about it, you know? But what are you saying? That I haven't finished <laughs> Crash. I don't have all the shit in Crash yet. There's the shit that is collectible. <laughs> Metal Jesus would be proud. <laughs> hey Teddy, what's your what's your game of the year? What's the that's majority? How bring, that's how you're gonna bring Teddy on the stage. No, 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 back up, back up. Up next, we have one of the most pristine uh, YouTubers. Uh, why are you Why are you calling for, people pristine? I like that word. <laughs> do today. Do you know how weird that is to call a person pristine? What well, we're doing it today. The, the chair, <laughs> you call like an chair. object pristine. Well, <laughs> like a pristine. new. <laughs> I guess it's better than calling them Christine, but I guess pristine. pristine. You know, it's always perspective. <laughs> the, All right. the, the coolest dude on YouTube walking up onto the stage. We got majority. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's me. Theodore with the button mappers. And I'm here today to talk to you about my personal favorite game of the year. 
2020. Ah, yes, it's, it was a year. One to be remembered. One to go down in the history books. And uh, probably not for video games, but we here at the Button Mappers appreciate our video games. And uh, there were a lot of games kind of ru running through my mind today. Like, what am I going to pick? What was the best game I played this year? I looked back at all our Game Talk episodes. I looked at all the games I picked. I looked at the games that we mapped out. And surprisingly, surprisingly it's not from any of them. And this pick is probably going to irk some people. Um, I'm not the bearer of popular opinions. And uh, I think that's fine. I think maybe just, you know, hear me out first before you come to judgment on it. But uh, it was um, a compilation of games, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And this game, let me start with what are the criticisms for it. Um, people say that, you know, the emulation isn't up to par with the emulation on PCs. People say that there's a serious lack of content. Um, and people say it's just a lazy port. People say, uh, this, you know, the six month time limit is um, garbage. Like, or why should you have to, you know, like, why is this a limited release and admittedly I, I don't like limited releases I don't like that idea but when this was announced I knew that I had to have it and the first thing I did was I went to Best Buy I just set up a pre-order and then it just came to me there was no pressure no stress involved the reason I felt like I had to own this is because I have been so wanting to play Sunshine over again and because of this, I can. And, uh, you know, Sunshine on the GameCube is, was as much as this game. And to pay that for, like, an old GameCube game is kind of hard to justify. And part of the reason, like, it's such a, such a hard-to-find game. It's not very well hidden, but it is a gem. Um, is It's just consumer demand. Nintendo has artificially created this consumer demand with a lot of these classic games that, you know, this should really be a legacy title that should be commemorated over and over again. And it is kind of a shame that Nintendo hasn't done that so much with Mario 64, hasn't done that with Mario Sunshine, and Galaxy, whatever. Like, you could get it on the Wii and, you know, it's still in GameStops nowadays. But the other two are relics of the past. And, you know, even though people say with this compilation that it's a lazy port, I just happen to love the accessibility. I happen to love the fact that there are multiple controller supports, that you can play Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine with a Pro Controller, with a GameCube controller, you can play with the Joy-Cons, you can play it in uh, handheld mode. I could play with my Sega Genesis controller if I wanted, although that's kind of crazy. And uh, I, so far at this point, I've cleared Mario 64 just for fun, not for an episode. And I've also uh, come near uh, finish, near credits in Super Mario Sunshine. I've tested Galaxy. They all play great. I don't care that, you know, my PC could do this better. I just care that, you know, I can experience these in a fun, friendly, accessible way today. That's my pick for Game of the Year. Mario who? Mario Tennis. Oh, did you miss it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always a big, you know, say I, I always say this that it doesn't matter where you play these games as long as you play them. It, I mean, it really is a stupid argument that some games play better one place or another. As long as you pl are playing them and enjoying them, wherever that may be, who cares? Who cares what other thing? Who cares if a certain game performs better on a certain console? I don't. So. Yeah. I'm I, take, the, I, I prepared for that speech. Thank I'm going to take the opposite opinion. I think you should play it on PC. What are you doing? VG, that was a bad opinion. Don't <laughs> go back to tech support. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's better to play it on the Switch because, uh, you know, you're playing it on the TV. When you're playing on PC, you got to play it on the computer. You know, you're sitting down. you like this on the keyboard. I'm not sitting down on my... What's more comfortable? I'm playing on my PC? As, what are you doing right now, Spencer? <laughs> right, Spencer, we're going back to League of Legends. Right now, I'm working my uh, leg muscles. <laughs> and I look like I'm sitting. I'm squeezing my stress ball in anger <laughs> that he's playing this on the Switch. How dare he? You want to see some bad Kegels? You come over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spencer has a few words left because I'm about to mute, mute his mic for forever because he's messing with tech support. So there you go. Oh, no. I made out of you. Thank you, tech support. <laughs> You can stop riding my ass today. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't see behind the chair. 
Yeah, my I agree with uh, with uh, with Teddy. I think that um, I think people went a little bit overboard uh, critiquing, you know, the game and how it's not like optimized to to its fu fullest. Uh, my like major complaint was that uh, they should have included Mario Gal Galaxy 2 just to complete that 3D um, yes. set of games. That would be that would have been excellent because I really loved that game. So I, I, I wish Nintendo would have added that. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be part of a separate, you know, digital download, or I'm sure they're going to charge separately for that. But uh, it would have been really nice if they included, you know, Mario Galaxy 2 to just have closure on those uh, 3D uh, Mario t uh, titles. But yeah, I, overall, I think it's a fantastic uh, compilation of games, and I'm actually looking forward to playing or replaying Sunshine as well. Um, I I remember I bought Sunshine Day One back in the day, and um, um, after I beat the uh, you know the final boss, um, you know, and getting ready to watch that ending uh, cinematic sequence, uh, the game froze. So I beat it again, and it froze again. So I guess my disc was like scratched. So I was never able to. I mean, obviously through YouTube, I was able to watch the ending, but uh, I, I want to you know replay the game so I can finally watch it <laughs> <laughs> properly, you know, on, on my own merits. But uh, yeah, I started at play, at playing it. Um, great. A great compilation. Uh, I want to go in order, so I started playing Super Mario 64 and didn't get far. But uh, I think that'll be my goal for next year to, at, at, at very least, at the very least, beat 64 and then Sunshine. Yeah, I would be surprised if there's not a volume two, you know, featuring games like Spirit Tracks, Skyward Sword, <laughs> and Galaxy 2 along with it. Yeah. I just think that uh, you know Nintendo is probably coming up with ideas as we speak. What the fuck are you talking about? I think everyone would love to play Spirit Tracks. <laughs> He's, in drunk. Modern He's drunk with power. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, man, the fact that Galaxy 2 is an on here is why I didn't buy it. Because I mean, I mean, I already have all these games separately, and like 60 bucks is, is a lot yeah. to ask me to rebuy games I already own. Um, but if they would have had Galaxy 2, I would have jumped on board, because I love Galaxy 2. So... <laughs> Yeah, I also have all the games, like, already, so I didn't really need to buy it, but I do think, like, it's good. It's a good, good like, package if, you know, if you don't have, like, any of the original games, then it's good for that, and, you know, portability, <laughs> so that's cool. Well, I didn't have any of these games, so it was a, a no-brainer for me, but um, I, I take a, a, an opposite approach of what a lot of the gamer people say, and I'm, I don't necessarily look out for gamers, personally. Um, I think a lot of them, you know, fuck them personally. But oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was fascinated that Nintendo, like their strategy with this game of like releasing it and being like it's timed for six months or whatever, and maybe they'll parse out like each game later for like thirty bucks or something a piece. I don't know. Um, I was fascinated by that, and I, I like the business side of it where it's like we have a brand, there's brand loyalty. Let's see what we can do to take advantage of the brand. And from a business perspective, it's genius and makes a lot of sense and is pretty freaking cool. And really the only reason I just said all this is so Terry can listen to it and then come at me in the comments. So <laughs> come on, bro, let's do it. You're stirring the pot today, man. Give me that essay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, it's a, I think it's a good strategy. I mean, I hate when Nintendo, Nintendo they create like this fake um, need for games, you know, having limited um, you know, access to the games and whatnot, but it works out every single time for them. If I and if I'm not mistaken, I think I read an article where uh, this uh, 3D Mario Collection is the best-selling Mario game. Like it, it had the the best opening month for any Mario game in history. Um, so I think it sold like millions. I don't know if it's because people are trying to secure a copy before it you know goes out, but whatever whatever it is, like Spencer said, you know, Nintendo. You know, when it comes to the uh, business model and, and planning they uh, you know they get away with it and you know they're they're brilliant yeah they're doing the same thing for that like english version of first fire emblem that they're putting on the eShop, which makes no goddamn sense because that's just a, a rom file that they translated over into english yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> why is that limited what the fuck did they know? dude it's genius they're just getting lazier and lazier and they're like, they get away with it i love it it's like a five dollar download like why is it limited <laughs> You can only download it for six months or however long. <laughs> Suddenly, the eBay moniker of rare and uh, limited is now maybe a little more honest. <laughs> so maybe they're living <laughs> up to that. Yeah. Speaking of uh, business, we have the financial businessman 
payroll uh, secretor, Mr. Spencer from the Button Mappers. Welcome, he's Spencer. Not, he's not pristine, by the way. Thank you, guys. I love your pr <laughs> pristinity. Not a word. Well, I, did, I did shower before this. So I feel like I'm a little pristine. Wave your hair one more time. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. He's really pulling off the uh, chie. Um, <laughs> Spencer, what is your personal best game of the year? What is the Spencer Award? Spencer. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII. Remake. Uh. Uh. Both. I just group them together because uh, the whole experience. I was new to it. And uh, I always wanted to play it. I missed the boat. Um, I was really, really poor growing up. I could not get a PlayStation 1. And by the time I got one, PS2 was out. So I kind of transitioned over, but I always wanted to play Final Fantasy 7. And, uh, and that one escaped me. 9 is, will probably always be my favorite. Uh, but again, that one's the one I got into first. So I like that one a lot. But 7, you know, everyone talked about 7. People on this side said it, it's overrated. People on this side said it's the best game ever. Uh, it's probably closer to the best game ever. It's really, really good. Uh, and Remake included. Uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And with the button mappers, we all agreed we we're going to play it. Uh, and it really it pushed me to actually complete it. Because I, I, I've a couple times gotten through Midgar and then just stopped. Uh, and I'm... And I, I, I guess because it turned, it changed how it felt to me after Midgar, but I powered through it and I'm really, really glad I did. Um, phenomenal game. I'm playing through it again right now. Um, and the remake is phenomenal. It's just like, it's such a love letter to the game. And everybody, if you played Seven, you should for sure play the remake at some point. Maybe you're waiting for all, all to collect together. Good luck in five years. I guess that'll happen. But um, it's totally worth it. And, and you get to see characters in a new light. So just the whole Final Fantasy VII experience, I, I give my game of the year. I could totally agree with that. I, I was surprised by just how much I enjoyed that game, playing through it this year. And I'm also playing through the remake, and I don't know, man. Like, I don't... I, I think it just loses something, in, in a sense. Like, I have... It's it's kind of a slog for me so far, trying to play through that game. I've uh, also played the the remake this year and beat it, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I like that it uh, expanded more on like those other characters, you know, like Biggs and Wedge and Jesse and all them. I thought that was pretty nice touch to it. And of course, they added in all this like other crazy stuff. But <laughs> yeah, I thought it was cool. I thought it was a, it was a good game. Speaking of the party, I just want to uh, interrupt and just say welcome, DZD. Oh, hey guys, what's up? Sorry, I was a little late. Yeah, better late than never. We'll squeeze you in at the end there for a little award time. All a right. new challenger has approached. <laughs> <laughs> DZD. That was my announcer voice. Uh, we were talking about Spencer's award here. The Spencer award goes to Final Fantasy VII. Uh, you said it's like the best game ever or close. Can you explain? Well, it's... You know, as far as its impact on, on gaming, um, it really got people into RPGs in the West. It's probably the first big RPG over here. Really. I mean... It sold 10 million in you, the United States. Yeah, I mean, you could say... I mean, you could argue that the best games came before it, like 6. My personal favorite, Chrono Trigger. Um, those, those two are usually seen as, like, the flag bearers. But I really do think 7 has really kicked it into high gear over here in America. And and it's the, is the game perfect? Absolutely not. I mean, there's just goofy story elements. There's weird mini games they're trying out. Okay, but as far as the impact it's made and and the legacy that it's created, I mean, we're making a, we're having a remake in 2020 for a game in 1996, 97, 98. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, look what it did for the PlayStation brand as a whole. It's very significant from that perspective. Yeah, as might as well, well Scott for PlayStation, especially back then. He was, I mean, so yeah, probably one of the best or biggest, at least biggest games of all time. Oh yeah. I, I think, you know, it's a, it's a really good game, but the remake is so much better, dude, because the backgrounds in Final Fantasy VII for the PS1 
I think half the time, dude, they're, they're really bad because if the character models, they don't really fit the backgrounds very well, the preset backgrounds. I mean, and during this time, there was other games that could do it much better, like Ocarina of Time. I bet you forgot that there was preset backgrounds in that game. You know, even the Mario Party games on the 64. <laughs> Mario yeah, Party yeah. You're in the really backgrounds? <laughs> yeah, bro, when you're in the board. Oh, the okay. Board, yeah. But Mario yeah, Party is my favorite RPG. Really good for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, when I think Super of like three hundred backgrounds, I think of like, you know, like survival horrors, like you know, like Resident Evil and all that. Yep. Oh, Resident Evil might have been my pick if it wasn't for Final Fantasy Seven. I played the Resident Evil remake. <sighs> Phenomenal. That's another thing though. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I love that one too. Yeah, um, I agree with you, Malta. The, the game, especially if you weren't a gamer at the time, I don't know how, how when you were a gamer or whatever, but but my goodness, some of it doesn't age very well. <laughs> but thank God for that remake. I mean, that remake does, like, it really does fill in that gap for people that are newer, that, that maybe they don't have that appreciation for Seven, but like, what are people talking about? Like, it really is an awesome, awesome entrance for that. So I think, I think what's, what's killing the remake for me is the... Oddly enough, it's the combat. I usually like action RPGs, but like, I don't know. I don't think it works. You know, I, I just don't I feel it, like it works as well. Yeah, I think the combat is a way better improvement than 15, because I'll be That's honest. That's true. I'm, it's, you're, you're right. Yeah. But as much as I do like the combat in Final Fantasy VII Remake, I wouldn't say it's like the best at what it does compared to like other, like, you know, PS4 games that I played in that same style. But I still think, like, it's, you know, it's better than what they had before, and that was kind of what I was looking forward to. Because I'm not going to lie, I was kind of skeptical before the game came out. I was like, oh, no, it looks like 15. If it plays like it, this is going to be really disappointing. But no, it, it was better. At least I thought so. Yeah, I'm a traditionalist. I like turn-based more. I always will. But... Uh, yeah, I think it's serviceable. I think you have to get used to it, and then and then it's like, I don't know if it ever becomes great, but it certainly becomes serviceable, I guess. Yeah, turn base is better for sure. Man. Like all the best RPGs are turn based. Yeah, awesome. I agree. All right, so, you never played Spectro. Go <laughs> <laughs> watch it, Bruno. <laughs> oh, man. I think this is another discussion we had a while back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <it was. no. laughs> hey, speaking of uh, Final Fantasy, let's use our Phoenix down to bring a Phoenix up and hear from the resident Phoenix, Mr. Bio Phoenix. <laughs> uh, that, that was funny. All right. <laughs> All right, so just like what Alex said, that like there's one game that like I wish I could mention here because I'm playing through it, but since I haven't beaten it yet, I think it would be better if I talked about it once I have beaten it. So instead, I'm going to pick a game that I played earlier this year back all the way in March. It was a game that came out in 2019, but I didn't get it until this year. And that was the, the AI Somnian files on the Switch. That's the version I got. It's also on PS4 and uh, PC. So for anyone that doesn't know what the hell this game is, it's, you know, it's a, um, like a point and click adventure game, kind of visual novel -y, which, yeah, I know it's weird that I picked a visual novel as my favorite game this year. I know it's crazy, huh? But here's the thing though, the story in this game is so damn good. And I love the concept a lot. Like the, the sum it up, it's pretty much like, um, like Inception or the, the anime film Paprika, where it's all about uh, this detective guy. He's trying to solve this crime, but they, he uses it. He works for an organization where they use a machine where they go inside like people's like minds. And that's how he like, like solves like the crime and such. And of course, you know, there's a lot of really, really great characterization, some funny dialogue, especially with uh, the main character and his, um, yeah. The, the other interesting thing is that he has like an eye and his eye like has like actually has like a personality so they like have like really good like conversations between each other it's really great and of course since i'm a big fan of uh the zero escape games like you know like 999 on the ds it's made by the same person who made this game so if, if you're familiar with that 
you'll definitely love it for that. And yeah, like I said, I just I was I was I really loved this game a lot. I thought it was very very good. Even like like I said, comparing it to his other works, it it holds up very well. And yeah, that that's my pick. That's a pretty good pick. I'm not really yeah, the it, biggest of. Uh, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Us. I said I'm not really the biggest uh, visual novel fan, but um, I played a couple. Um, one of them being the Silver Case, which is a phenomenal uh, yes. a visual novel game. I played that, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I might uh, try out some uh, some more after that one. Yeah, AI Somnium. I mean, Spike Chunsoft is like the naughty dog of visual novels. I mean, whether it's Danganronpa, the 999 series, AI Somnium, and so many more. I, I mean, when I played AI Somnium, I was completely blown away by the story. I know, I know that's a term that's used quite often in gaming by gamers. But seriously, when you start playing the story and start realizing just how many twists and turns that story takes, it's pretty amazing. The writing, the, the mentality that it takes for somebody to write a story like that is quite appreciate. I mean, I was very appreciative of that. Is this like, um, cause I, 999 is my favorite game on the DS and uh, admittedly, you know, as much, as much as I love that game, I haven't played the other two yet. Um, but I think I'm going to amend that because recently they, they had a sale on, on Steam, uh, Spike chunks off a sale. So I did end up picking up, you know, the three games and also all the uh, Danganronpa games. But uh, is this also kind of like a trilogy? Is it a multiple games or is it, is it only like uh, one game? It's just one game. Yeah, it's just uh, all one game. It uh, Yeah, like I said, it came out uh, in 2019. Okay. And I saw it on sale because um, it was a Spike Chunsoft uh, sale. Um, and, you know, the uh, the Zero Escape games were like dirt cheap. They were like $6 a piece. And same with the Danganronpa. And I saw the AI uh, uh, game that you guys mentioned. But that was a little bit, um, the discount wasn't as you know heavy as the others. So I was like, I don't think I'm going to pick it up for now. But um, definitely, I'll, I'll put it on my wish list uh, for a, a future sale. Because I, I do enjoy those games. You know, 999, I absolutely loved it on, on the DS uh, back then. Oh, yeah. And also, like, getting those games for $6 a piece, damn, that's a steal. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, like, it's a newer game, so obviously it's not going to be, like, as cheap as the other ones where, you know, those other games have been out for some time. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, eventually it will probably go down cheaper, though. But either way, though, I do think it is worth playing through, like, if it is something that's that's interesting to you. Because, obviously, I do understand that, that, that visual novels are not going to be for everyone because, you know, right. like... Why can't you like going around punching people in the face? I want to do that. <laughs> right, I want to shoot guns. I want to blow stuff up with meteor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me shoot this Whoa. response in the multi-option menu. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask. You know, I guess like the nine 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 or like the zero escape kind of have puzzle elements to keep like the gameplay kind of interesting or like just you know varied. Is there anything like that in uh, AI Somnium? Um, yes, though the way how it's done in that game is pretty different or basically without going too much into detail about it is that like there's like a time limit, but the way how it works is that like every time you pick like an option, it takes away the time and you basically have to try and figure out like what is like the best like option to take to do the puzzle what you're trying to do. And of course, you know, you're inside someone's mind. So it's all like psychedelic and weird and all this. I love Psychonauts. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. cool. Yeah, it was cool. Speaking of uh, mastering time, we have the master of Malta, Mr. Malta Master. Hey, what's up? That's me. Hey, what's up? It's me. Uh, Malta Master. What is the Malta Master Award? for 2020 video game. <clears throat> oh, real quick, for the second half of this year, I've been almost strictly playing Nintendo 64 and Game Boy games because those are the videos that I'm making right now. Love so, it. Since you know, taste. Uh, the best game that I played from beginning to end this year so far is banjo kazooie for sure Woo! yeah there's no no other game 
that can be the best one. I mean, this is a truly perfect game. Uh, it's not my favorite game, but, you know, this is the game of the year. You know, this is a... It's the game that I think that it will re we're really would be one of my favorites if it had the multiplayer of Banjo-Tooie. Because that multiplayer was... That was huge for me as a kid. You know, the single player didn't exactly tickle the twine per se, but you know, this is about Banjo Kazooie. Banjo Kazooie is an, is an amazing game. I honestly think it's the best 3D platformer I've ever played. This is the best one I've ever played, and it's the best one ever. Yeah, because I played a lot. You're, you're right. Yeah, did you hear about the remake that's coming out that they're making? A new one? Benju? I'm just kidding. Of course they're not. Why Don't would they do that to me. make us a... Don't I break know. my heart, Amon. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I wish, right? I mean, I don't know what Rare and Microsoft are waiting for. It, it truly is a classic. One of the best games ever. I mean, I spent countless hours on the N64 playing Rare games, and that was had to be that was one of them, along with Diddy Kong and some others. But No sequel. Is it is it as good as the third Banjo Kazooie? The one on the Xbox. Amon, <laughs> uh, Amon, can you better. please eject Spencer from the call? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard. There's a game called Ukulele. It's real Banjo Three E. <laughs> uh, let's not bring that up, please. <laughs> that hurts personally. Is there a mod on the PC where you can play as Banjo in that game? Really? There you go. You there you go. It's something, I, I guess. I'd rather just play some shitty kids game in dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure some kid made like a really good Banjo Kazooie clone in like dreams. Yeah, that game can make any game <laughs> dreams. Not but best. yeah, ben, oh, no, go ahead. Ben, um, for me, it's one of the best 3D platformers of, of all time. Um, I know it. You know, for 3D platformer platforming fans, I think it's often praised. But I think for the general like gamer, I guess population, it all I think it often just goes under, under you know, under the radar. I think, which is a, sh a shame. But I think um, it, it just took the uh, the innovation of the Nintendo 64 being kind of like the first 3D uh, system from from Nintendo, and it took what Mario 64 did, and it just improved just about everything you know the, the gameplay the uh, the graphics were amazing um and uh it, you know it was just such a, w a very well ma made game which uh in my opinion is probably the best uh, rare game on the on the nintendo 64 it's uh, pure quality uh admittedly i haven't i i, I have played banjo Tooie, but uh that's on my to-do list to sometime you know go back and, and try it um i haven't heard as many positive things from you know Banjo Tui, I think a lot of people complain about the length, but uh, no matter what, I, I do want to go back and, and try it just to see how it stacks up against Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, I actually agree. I love uh, Banjo Kazooie, and I love Tui as well, just as much, to be honest. But I actually think they're both great. And um, yeah, I think just Banjo, I, I'm not going to lie, I actually kind of like it better than uh, Mario 64. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It has more variety than 64, in my opinion. Yeah, it does. And another, one other thing I really like, too, is that I like that, like, when you're in Grunty's Lair, and then when you're, go when you're trying to go to, like, the other levels, like, the music, like, transitions with, like, the theme of that level. I always thought that was, like, really cool. I like the uh, gibberish, like, talk for, for the characters. That, uh, you know, that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly how we're gonna finish this game game is great. I'm surprised hey, um, I... that you know I, I heard a couple of things like oh it has more variety than Mario 64, which is crazy because Mario 64 has 15 worlds as opposed to Banjo, which has 10. Um, Multimaster, where do you stand on comparing Banjo Kazooie to Mario 64? Oh, uh, Banjo Kazooie is better, dude. I mean, like Super Mario 64 is the most revolutionary game for sure. And this didn't do what Mario 64 did. But th this is just the perfect game for a 3D platformer. I mean, it does all the, the whole collectathon thing, but it doesn't go overboard, you know? It doesn't make you jump into a barrel and switch into a different monkey. <laughs> 
Oh, oh, oh got fired. <laughs> no, that's my favorite. That's, oh. that's, I like that one better, though. I like Donkey Kong better. I'm not even gonna lie. Banjo, because <laughs> Dewey is my favorite N64 game, and it's like probably my top five games of all time. And I can, uh, give Teddy a little pushback here. Yeah, Mario has more levels and objectives probably, but the levels and objectives you're in in Mario don't immerse me. They feel like floating obstacle courses. The level places in Banjo have NPCs, they feel alive, they feel like actual places. And I like exploring the worlds in Banjo-Kazooie well, a lot more than the, the ones in 64. So, yeah, yeah, I think also the char character manipulation when you go from Banjo to Kazooie and how they control, that's a pretty cool dynamic too that was quite revolutionary for its time. Yeah, it's very seamless. It's like how you do like the little, um, little Kazooie walk thing. I can't remember what it's called. I haven't played it in years, but talent the way rat. just like, yeah, Talent Rat, the way you can like switch between that and like back to Banjo is like, it's just so quick and I love it. Yeah, there's also more move sets you can do. Like you know, you can throw eggs. <laughs> you can <perform> <laughs> <out>. <laughs> uh, I like the I, I like what DZ said. Back to banjo. I want that to be the name of a band or something. What back to banjo? We can, we can start one. Okay. Talentrot? Back to banjo. Yeah. Oh, back to one banjo. Wonder the talent trot. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. No, that. Let's that, start that, a banjo Kazooie themed band. Every right, song could be a move set. I'll put yeah. it through. <laughs> the <laughs> the butt egg <laughs> shot. What genre of music would we play? Would it have to be like kind of country, kind of rockabilly? Yeah, yeah. Genre with the... Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the only we'll be the only genre listed as platformer. <laughs> <laughs> and Apple Play Music. I'll grab my kazoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, just like the uh, the band, the band back to banjo is a real mashup of, of talent. <laughs> we have a, a, a man of much talent himself who who mashes up lots of lots of great gaming content and personality. We're getting and, there. And tech support, Mr. VG Mashup. So, guys, so let's see. Before I tell you my game of the year. I'm sure you guys may or may not have heard of this channel by the name of TurboZone because Turbo. on his channel he recommended a game by the name of Clue Clue Land that I try out and play <laughs> and oh, while, that game, like <laughs> while that game didn't quite make it to the top of the tier for me personally I think that I have to go with Chalk here and give it to one of Sony's best exclusives that came out for the PlayStation 4 this year in Ghost of Tsushima. Now, The Last of Us 2 was also in consideration for me personally. I know it got a lot of hate from fans, but not for me personally. I think Ghost is done in such a perfect and magnificent way, especially if you're a fan of the Assassin's Creed series. It does a lot of things that the Assassin's Creed does, does it better, does it more fluidly, and things move at a lot faster pace. Another thing that fascinates me about the game itself is the overall emphasis of culture and how Japanese culture to me, any Asian culture, I mean, I am part Asian myself. So anything having to do with Asian culture just really impresses me. And to go back and step into that period of time, um, you know, during the Mongolian invasion, even though it's fictional, I think it's pretty cool to see how guerrilla warfare is sort of frowned upon by a lot of the traditionalists, a lot of the samurai, uh, samurai and our protagonist, even though he has to resort to it, he makes a lot of enemies along the way, but he's fighting with his inner demons as well, because it's something that is sort of not considered nice or, you know, honor worthy, I guess is the better word. So I thought that uh, Naughty, or not Naughty Dog, Sucker Punch did a magnificent job with this game. I really do hope that they make a sequel, but even if not, I think as it stands one and done, I think it's a very solid experience for fans that like the Assassin's Creed formula, but are kind of tired of the boredom and the overall strength uh, length of the side quests. I think it's a very solid title. So my game of the year. That's a good pick. I, I always wanted to get that game, but I unfortunately don't have a PS4 currently. And uh, it has everything that I, I could ever want. It has altern alternate history. It has... Uh, awesome action as eastern culture and it just looks great 
It's a, it's a beautiful game. Just like the stills are amazing. Yeah, the one-on-one -on -one samurai battles are some of the best I've ever seen in gaming. I mean, it really does put you in that moment where you're fighting a sword, sort of a ring, and it's you against the opponent, and it feels really epic. Yeah, I also really want to get that game, but I just haven't. But I'm hoping I can get it during, like, you know, holiday sales or something. But it does look really damn good, though. <laughs> I also haven't bought it, but as a suck, uh, you know, I'm a sucker, as in sucker punch, for um, samurai movies and kung fu movies and stuff, and just like that's just you know like that sort of culture. Like this game looks like it's way up my alley, and I really want to play it, but at the same time, where it's like an open game, right? Like I'm probably not going to finish it when I get it. I'll, I'll be honest. I, that's what's been holding me back is that like it's it's one of those games that like it looks like there's just there's too much, you know? And I'm just like, uh, am I that hungry for a game right now that I just want to like dive into this big open world experience? You will be shocked though. I mean, I played that game after playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which honestly is just, I mean, it's a beautiful game and all, but that's just way overdone. The thing I like about this one is that even the side missions, the open world, they go by so fast and they're actually engaging. You know, the characters, the non-playable characters that you meet and do missions for, and with and sort of recruit to your team. They're all very organic and really, really well put together. So it never really feels like a chore. Yeah, I'm on the same boat as well. I haven't purchased a game, which is pretty rare because I'm typically for Sony exclu exclusive games. I'm, you know, I'm all for it. Um, but, you know, I'm, on, I'm, I'm in a weird position because position, I, was, I, was, I was thinking of picking up that game in The Last of Us 2, which is another game that I really want to play uh, during Black Friday. But at, at this point, I'm like, I don't know if I should just wait for the inevitable <laughs> PS5 version uh, and improve 4K 60 uh -huh. frames per second. Because yeah. uh, I'm going to get a PS5 at, at one point, uh, no matter what. So um, I was debating on whether I should buy, you know, both. Uh, Ghost and uh, The Last of Us 2 now during Black Friday or just wait for the PS5 version. So uh, tough decisions, but uh, especially for The Last of Us 2, I've been able to, you know, maintain myself like spoiler free so far for that game. So, um, but yeah, the Ghost of Tsushima, uh, from what I've seen, looks amazing. And uh, it's just one of those games where, man, I, I, I really want to see that in its full glory on, on a PS5, you know, you know, on max settings. I, I think that game is just going to blow everyone away uh, for, like, the definitive version, if you will. Well, you could actually go watch the Last of Us 2 map out with me, Spencer, and Amon, and it's actually just like playing the game. Sa same experience. Okay. Yeah, except, except better better experience. What happened. It's better. <laughs> uh, Amon, I have a question for you. Sure. Okay, I am unlike Alex. I uh, have no love for Eastern culture. I don't find samurais interesting whatsoever. I don't like any of that crap. But I've really been interested in that game just because of how great it's supposed to be. And I like the open world. Like, you know, The Witcher 3, I, I love that game. And that's like Poster Child. And I know this isn't that necessarily. But um, is it still worth it if you're not super into samurais and all that? Yes. 100%. Yeah, Samurai's just kind of adds that Eastern touch to it, but overall, I think you would still get a lot of enjoyment if you're a fan of hack and slash action. And, and you know, the hack and slash term is used and kind of thrown around pretty much with all games, but it's done really, really well. There's a strategic element to every fight that you encounter, whether you're going from a stealth perspective or going pretty much, I guess, swords blazing, if you will. Um, also, the one-on-one -on -one battles are done so well and so epic. It almost feels like a, um, not a, not necessarily a Bloodborne style of game at that point, because in Bloodborne or in Neo 2, the game that I would refer to, the enemies are much larger in scope and scale. This, this feels like, you know, you're fighting enemies, it's one-on-one, -on -one, there's no size difference, but overall it feels like you're really fighting somebody with uh, just as much technical skill, if not more than yourself. You know, when How you put you... it... Oh, go on. Oh, God. Oh, I was going to say, the way you put it like that makes me think of those Way of the Samurai games. I don't know if you've played those. Yes. It is a major evolution of those previous Way of the Samurai games. Absolutely. Oh, right on. Yeah, because I like those, so... How, how would you characterize the RPG elements? 
Uh, it's nothing different than like God of War and you know games like that that have RPG elements. You know the Batman Arkham series. Just like like so, uh, upgrades. Upgrades and stuff, but yeah, nothing nothing more than that. Hmm. And how does it? But still, I mean. To... Oh no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I, I was gonna ask a joke question. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> compared to Fufu Land, uh, a little bit better. <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Teddy's got caught. I did not recommend him Kluku Land. If anything, I said Spectro. <laughs> I was going to say, is Alex part samurai? Because Spencer said he's unlike Alex. Yeah. Uh oh. For appreciating Eastern. I heard well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, if I, and, and if I recommended him Kluku Land, I have to perform a higher key read. <laughs> a higher key. Are you like combining uh, a hierarchy, hierarchy and Harakiri? Hi Hierarchy. I can't say it. I can't say it. Sudoku. This hurts me. <laughs> Sudoku. Sudoku. I love puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> hierarchy. Hierarchy. Oh Show God. us on the pick, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beautiful. I was actually gonna say how to compare to Samurai Jack, but thanks for throwing Clue Clue in my. Uh, verbatim um i did want to say you know i i have that like slightest bit of like appreciation for asian heritage as well like culture i like uh i'm almost entirely european but i have like the slightest bit of russian ancestry and that's the closest i can say get to saying i'm not european because it's eurasian so like even that like fraction of saying i'm asian like i'm not but like you know i i cling to that <laughs> um i played a little bit of this game when i was in texas um on uh, girlfriend's brother's PS4. And I played about an hour into it. I did like how it looked, especially when you're riding on horseback. I know how it starts with um, like your entire clan getting massacred by the Mongols, is it? Spoil spoilers, spoilers, whoa. <laughs> Spoiler of the <laughs> intro of the game, yes. The, the cutscene before any gameplay happens. Uh, I wanted to ask how, how substantive uh, is the narrative from that point forward? Do you feel it delivers? It's absolutely does because not only are you dealing with the protagonist himself the antagonist in this game is pretty well thought out as well but really it's about the supporting characters and cast that are around him so they have their own stories they have their own agendas and their agendas sort of tie into the overall culture of the island of Tsushima where they're part of and it sort of separates itself from the mainland in some aspects where they're a lot more centralized just to how things are going on within the island themselves so you will see a lot of the supporting characters fighting their own demons you know doing things unconventionally that are not samurai like and basically having their own i guess uh regrets for training or meeting or doing things with certain other characters so it's very very involved very cool Hmm. All right, I'm, I'm on. I've sent you two tickets. I need you've had your 15 minutes. Get on those tickets. Let's <laughs> see some production. All right. Yeah. Did you? Uh, you need my bank account too, right? So you can mail the uh, direct deposit in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that when I'm, when I'm ready. <laughs> Speaking of I'll tickets, I'll do that when I see that. <laughs> Speaking of tickets, uh, we here at the Button Mappers are offering an airline special. We have uh, three tickets to anywhere you like on the SNES map. Oh, hey, let's refer to the SNES mapper. All right, so showtime. Um, yeah, for me, uh, th this year I played a bunch of games in a couple of favorite series of mine, including you know the Resident Evil games and some Ease games. But uh, for my pick of the year, I wanted to go with a, uh, a series that I, I was hoping to, to play um, these series for a long time and I finally did taking advantage of the I guess um, staying at home having more uh, free time to, to do things uh, working from home due to the uh, pandemic and that game is uh, The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky first chapter um, finally I was able to um, start that game um, you know I've been meaning to play to play for a long time but I'm a little bit uh, overwhelmed sometimes when I when I'm trying to start a uh, JRPG and you know they're typically very long games that require uh, time commitment but boy I'm glad I did you know um, I, I think I started playing uh, first chapter um, around June and within a month I, I was able to to beat the game and 
Uh, I did something that I ra rarely do, which is um, I typically, you know, when I beat a game that I really enjoy and I know there's a sequel, I try to wait a few months or maybe a year or so before I jump into a, a, a sequel. But for Trails in the Sky first chapter, I just had to play the second chapter like right away. I'm not even kidding. As soon as I finished the the first chapter, I was already booting up the, uh, the you know, the second chapter. And it's just a game that does uh, a lot of things uh, pretty well. Um, JRPGs are usually known for, you know, you have to have a pretty good story. Um, the story is very solid. The, the world building, um, you know, it's fantastic. Um, and it builds up, uh, sets the stage for the later games in the series, which by the way, I already completed second chapter and I'm currently playing the third chapter. I'm almost done with that. So I'm slowly making my way through. I believe there are nine games. If you count all the arcs, you know, you have the Trails in the Sky arc, then you have the Crossbell arc, and then the tra uh, Trails of Cold Steel, which is kind of like the most uh, popular arc in the series. So I'm, I'm making my way through, you know, uh, through the series now slowly but surely, but uh, Trails in the Sky first chapter, you know, it's a fantastic introduction, even though the game is already a little bit on the older side. I think it's almost 20 years old uh, by now, you know, the game. But fantastic uh, gameplay, turn-based uh, combat system, pretty solid, um, very interesting characters, world building, and um, the, the ending of the game, obviously I'm not gonna spoil it if you guys haven't played it yet, but it's just mind-blowing. And uh, I'm really happy I finally gave the, uh, the series a, a shot this year, and now I'm completely hooked into it. So I'm definitely looking forward and making progress. and. Uh, uh, playing the other games in, in, the, in the series as well. All right. Well, I'm probably one of the biggest Trails fans in here, as far as I know, unless someone else can... Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I've uh, I've started with that series with Cold Steel 1, and I've been playing them through that. And I actually did play um, uh, the two... Uh, uh, the sky chapters i haven't played the third part to it for whatever reason but i do own it though but yeah no that, that's actually pretty great that you actually were able to get into it from the very beginning because i know there's a few people that i've talked to that like they say like oh the series looks really cool but the first game is like you know it's very basic compared to like the other ones and it's you know and also it is pretty slow pace like it has a, a, a very slow beginning part to it but I do think that where it excels at is, yeah, the ending, I think, was, like, very, very good. And also, it was very kept hidden under wraps, which I think was very great. It wasn't, like, super predictable or anything. And, um, yeah, the world building, I think, was really good. But, yeah, like I said, I started with Cold Steel 1 and then going to Trails. Like, I was able to appreciate the world building more because I was already familiar with it. But, yeah, no, I think that that's, that's pretty cool that you're able to get into it now. Yeah, it's a great I'm, series. I'm a big fan, big fan of the Trail series. I mean, oh, you know, it's some of the. You know, whenever you talk about underrated turn-based JRPGs, the Trail series always comes up. And you know, I love the characters. The music is always top-notch. Love the battle system. The games are, admittedly, a little bit slower than maybe some of the more, I don't know, JRPGs out there. But I still love them. I love Trail Mix. Um, I love when you. <laughs> the good trail makes those little butterfinger pieces in it. Uh, mm, Got to go the M and M's, dude. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, I'm I'm a butterfingers guy, but thank you uh, for your okay. input. I mean, no, nobody asked you for your input, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm the biggest trails fan here. I like the dirt trails when I go hiking. <laughs> At first, I thought you were going to mention the trails is in the, uh, you know, that, that dirt bike mini game from Ubisoft. I trials, was trying to think right? of what the name yeah. Yeah. Like, Actually, I really like urban trials, trails. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I tried to play Cold Steel, and it's not because it's bad that I stopped. It's just, I think my mechanism for playing it was not very good. I was, I was constantly playing it on my um, laptop while I'm doing work and it's, you need to like immerse yourself in it. I, I think I just need to dedicate more time to it, but it kind of felt like it, I was doing cold steel. so not necessarily yours, but I've, I've tried yours before too. And it kind of felt like, like a persona game almost or like, like, cause I'm not an anime guy. So this might just be a regular anime thing, but like you're, you're a kid going to like a school learning how to be a warrior or learning how to be like in the military or something, which is such like a fantasy probably an anime thing so it's it's 
And then certainly the sexual stuff was tongue in cheek in there as well. <laughs> the first so. game is very, very slow. Uh, admittedly, I think the second game and beyond the story really picks up, but you kind of have to slog through the first one. Mm. So it, it does take a little, you know, at least six chapters after that, you're like, okay, maybe the story is progressing a little bit quicker now. How long is the chapter? Yeah. What's that? How long is the chapter? Um, it I, I'd say it takes between fifty to sixty hours, maybe. Um, oh, oh, whoa! <laughs> and it jumped uh, into uh, one right after. I know that can be yeah. so hard with like I, I can think of so many examples of games like you know oh I just play one of these I gotta take a break Shin Megami Tensei Fire Emblem Yakuza you know like those are the typical like okay that was just like a chunk. What makes yeah. it so that it doesn't feel so burdensome jumping into the next one? For me, it was the the ending of the first one. You know, what whatever happens on the first one, the uh, the sequel picks up right after the events of the first one. So I, I just really wanted to see what happens next. Um, and really, when you look at the first two games, at least to get they, they almost feel feel like one game. So and the second game is even longer. So when you put the pieces together, it's like 120 hours. Um, you know, because the second game really feels like a continuation of the first one. The setting, it's almost the same, you know, the same places. Uh, most of the characters are, you know, re recurring from the first one. So uh, for me, it was just the, uh, you know, finding out about the story. And I think that tells you, you know, the value of the game, because in a JRPG, you, you do want to have a, a pretty solid uh, storyline and, and characters. And just going back to what um, BioPhoenix said earlier, I think one of the uh, virtues of, um, of this game is the the, the unexpected ending because I knew beforehand, you know, I was listening to a lot of people's um, impressions, you know, spoiler-free impressions that everyone kept saying, you know, the ending is the best part, the ending of, is the best part. So as I was playing the game, I, I had all these like scenarios in my mind of what the possible plot twist could be, you know, who the bad guys could be, what's going to happen next. So I had like 20, 30 different uh, multiple choices and endings in my head, but nothing uh, nothing compared to, you know, what happened at, at the end. I think they, they did a very good job of keeping things in, in, in wraps, like um, BioPhoenix said. And, uh, you know, the, the ending was definitely my favorite part of, of the game. How does it compare to Spectropes? <laughs> it's not as good, obviously. <laughs> Spectrobes has the best world building. <laughs> Spectrobes is good. Spectrobes in a refrigerator is even better. Okay. <laughs> is it? But yeah, no. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask: Is it mappable? Do you think as the SNES mapper? I think it is. Um... Say, no. Say no. <laughs> I think in order... I'm not playing it. <laughs> uh, it's uh, definitely a time commitment, but I think the true, like a true map out, should be like the first two games because again, you know, they're, you know, they, they really go hand in hand, and you know, to in order to get the full like story, um, you know, description, you truly have to play the, the first two games. But yeah, it, it definitely is. You know, so if you guys ever want to map it out, count me in because um, I'm more than happy to. Uh, talk about that game and anytime I, I have the chance yeah I'd be down for that too <laughs> yeah there you go we're gonna need a year of prep time for that one <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I do recommend I know I know uh, Trails of Cold Steel is kind of like the most popular uh, arc in, in the um, in the Legend of Heroes um, series and, and a lot of people that's their starting point but if, if you guys are in uh, mildly interested in, in the Legend of Heroes games, I strongly suggest uh, starting with the Trails in the Sky, just to have that chron chronological, um, I guess, uh, order, if you will, in the story. Um, it's not like the end of the world if you start with the Trail of Cold Steel games, but um, if you hear from people that have played all the games so far, uh, it's uh, better to do it chronologically so that uh, you don't have any like spoilers, um, you know, playing the Cold Steel games. Yeah, usually the spoiler stuff for the, for those three games usually don't happen until, like, the third game. So you can play, like, the first two as their own, and you'll be good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've, I'm have i actually playing through the fourth game right now. Well, not right, right right now, but, you know, like, I've been playing it a lot, and, yeah, it's so damn good. That's, like, my, um, 
you know, that would be my game of the year pick if I finished it, but I haven't because it's long. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I, I can talk about that series a lot if I could, but you know, we'd be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, uh, where's your thumbnail from again? My thumbnail, like the one I'm using right now, in the Gmail thing. Oh, it's uh, it's Vampire Hunter D from the anime oh. movie. Vampire Hunter D. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> God damn it! You, you know oh what else God. is really good? <laughs> that begins with the letter D. <laughs> DZ D. Uh. <laughs> DZ right, well, D. Uh. Welcome DZ D. You got the final pick. Where does the oh, DZ D video game award go to? All right. Well, uh, I just want to start off by saying, you know, thanks again for letting me on and uh, sorry for uh, everything. And um, I really appreciate it. So uh, 2020 has definitely been like a just a crazy year. And uh, I kind of wanted to go back to something that was from my childhood and is probably one of my favorite games. It's um, it's an N64 game. Uh, it's kind of a late one. And it goes by the name of uh, Mischief Makers. And uh, it's basically just uh, this platforming game. It was made by Treasure, uh, the guys playing Gunstar Heroes. And uh, it was also, um, I think it was like a collaboration between like Enix before, you know, they merged with Square and all that. And um, it's really fun, really simple. It's just, you're like this little robot maid who can like grab stuff twice her size and like shake it and then throw it at enemies to do like extra damage to them and uh it's really short it's only like a couple of hours if you're just um you know playing through the uh the main story and you're not going back to get all the gold gems which which you need to get the uh, secret ending but I, I still haven't done that even though i've this is like my favorite game and i've played it for like 20 years but it's uh i love it a lot um there's this kickstarter coming out for this new um spiritual successor uh, I'm not sure how what good it'll do, but you know, hopefully it won't be a ukulele incident. So as long as it's not that, I'll I'll be fine. What's wrong with a ukulele? Well, what was the answer? <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Ukulele's okay, a fine game. number nine. Would have know, been, um, I, yeah. Ukulele I think was just mediocre. Yeah, I think you said <laughs> that okay. ukulele is a big piece of shit. <laughs> no, nobody's saying that. I'm just saying. Wait, no. It didn't live up to everyone's expectations. Oh. Okay. Spencer, quit your mischief. Easy <laughs> <laughs> D, continue. All right. And one of the best things about this game, it's it's like a 2D platformer, even though it's like it was made for the N64. And it has just a variety of like gameplay elements. It's like uh, one stage you're like in this bullet hell boss fight and you're like dodging all these missiles and lasers and you're like grabbing the missiles and lasers, you're throwing them back at them. Like it's some sort of crazy dodgeball game. And then in the next, um, actually in the previous level, you're like having a freaking dodgeball fight with a cat. And it's like, this is, this is amazing. This is, this is the, this is peak game right here. <laughs> Did you know that in 2009, Games Radar called it possibly the most underrated and widely ignored game on the N64? So you would say um, it's actually a hidden gem? Yeah, I would say that. Whoa. Did you mash up? <laughs> that's, that's for you. I know. I know. <laughs> Sadly, I have not played this one, so I can't talk. But I've, obviously, I've heard about the game itself. You know, any 2D game on the consoles for that generation usually were pretty solid. It's one I, I wanted to try for a very long time. It's actually picking up in value, so it's kind of stopped me from grabbing it. Uh, one question I always have with the 2D platformers on the 64 is, is it uh, D-pad accessible? I think you only can use the D-pad. I don't think you can like use the uh, the stick. That's why I just kind of emulate it. I know it's bad, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. That's not bad. You're, you're saving money. <laughs> hey, I, it's called digital preservation. I don't know if you've heard of it, guys. <laughs> yeah. I do things now. Welcome to my personal that. museum. In this corner, we have the Mischief Makers painting. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Let's uh, some of my green tea. They were not a warm. My, uh, my uh, one of my schoolmates had, you know, back then, you know, when we were kids, um, you know, we would, uh, you know, lend each other, you know, games. 
and uh, he had he was the only one that had mischief makers among our group of uh, friends. So I remember he gave it to me, um, and uh, among other Nintendo 64 games that I did not own because I, I never uh, owned uh, mis uh, mischief uh, makers. And I remember trying it, and at the time, you know, it was it was like an uncool game for the Nintendo 64 because that was the the uh, the uh, you know the providence of 3D gaming. You know the right. N64, PlayStation. So I remember playing it just a couple of levels, and I'm like, you know, why would I want to play a side-scrolling game? Um, that you, you know, play I, a girl, so that's icky. <laughs> <laughs> I just spent, you know, the, the last five years or so playing side-scrolling games on the Super Nintendo, and it was like the uh, the uncool thing, you know, to 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 play a side-scrolling 2D game on on the N64. But now that I'm older, I I kind of want to go back and. And, and try the game again because it, it, it does seem to have like an inter interesting you know mechanics that are pretty unique uh, so I do want to go back and, and try it unfortunately I don't think it's available in any uh, form of uh, virtual console or Steam no. or anything like that so I think emulation is the uh, the only way to go or you know buy the uh, the original game with the um, 60 yeah. hardware which I, I don't have a N64 anymore so but I do want to come back and explore it because, um, you know, I, I just shrug it off um, back then, you know, in, in the day and uh, definitely uh, want to play it again. Or maybe on the N64 Mini, right? Which is going to be announced. <laughs> if only. Damn it, I'm on. <laughs> Mischief Maker seems like the exact kind of game they would put on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's some sort of like legal battle between like a. Uh, Enix and like treasure for like who owns the rights to the character and the game. I don't know. It's it's complicated. That's probably why it's not been it's, re released. It's probably yeah. hotly contested right now. <laughs> yes, this is what uh, this is why Square's losing so much money now. <laughs> speaking of speaking of hot, I just want to let you guys know that I would let I would let treasure touch me wherever they wanted to touch me. That's all oh. I'm I love Treasure. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're they're, they're a great company. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I love Sin and Punishment, Gunstar Heroes. I love mm -hmm. um, Bongayo. I think that's a fun game. Bongayo, I like that name too. Um, you know, I like I, I like a ton of their games. Um, Dynamite Heady. Dynamite Heady is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. They also had the other one. Was it Alien Soldier or something like yeah. that? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. That that one's really good too on Genesis. Um, they made a McDonald's game. <laughs> yeah, the the Ronald McDonald one. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that one. That game was by them. <laughs> It's so weird to think, but they did, and it's actually pretty decent. Yeah, so fantastic. I love them. Sin and Punishment is probably my favorite. So, how much is the game going nowadays for, like the N64 cartridge? I'll take a quick look. For for what game? Mischief, Mischief um, Makers. Mischief Makers. Oh, yeah. that's like forty-five bucks, dude. Forty-five. Loose loose car. Loose car. Oh man. I mean, I think getting uh, any yeah. N64 game, the expectations you get in loose card. Yeah, I yeah. see online for like 30 ish, 30 and tax and shipping. So, yeah, around 40, 45. Yeah. Whoa. There's Maybe one... Japanese is a little bit cheaper. I don't know. Maybe, no. but there's one like sealed for like nearly $600. Oh, yeah. How many of you I own mean, a sealed 64 game? <laughs> <laughs> Not till now. <laughs> Screw no. the PS5 and the Series X. I'm getting a sealed copy of Mischief Makers that I can put on my shelf. <laughs> yeah. You can buy it and do an unboxing on your YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. Just watch everybody <laughs> cringe as I uh, uh -huh. open it up. Uh, Dude, if great. I get a sealed game, bro, I'm opening it, dog. I don't give a fuck what. Yeah, game same it here. Is, man. I don't care if it's stadium events on the NES. Too. Yeah. I'm oh, yeah. It. But if I'm paying $600, I'm like, Jesus. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, if you think about it, every single game that we've owned was once sealed at one point, so it's like, well, exactly. fuck it, might as well go all the way, right? Yeah. I'll open any game, dude. I don't care, dude. I will open it on my browser. Because <laughs> you buy them to play them, dude, not to just have them looking all nice in your collection. What are actually you really collecting for, to play them or just to have them? I think I have an unsealed N64 game here. I, I might be a millionaire. What's look? <laughs> we got <laughs> Clue Clue 64. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Turok Wage Wars. Alex's endorphins are rising. 
<laughs> Endorphin <laughs> rising. I was really fair, man. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just kidding. I I got that game as part of, of of a bundle. I think I bought like three or four games a couple of years ago, and I got that one sealed. So I kept it sealed because I have um, no intention of playing it, you know. But I don't know why it was sealed. <laughs> because it's a, a magical experience. In in the in 2018. A Turok Rage Wars sealed was sixty two dollars. Oh God! Uh, that that <laughs> I, I bought. I think I it was a couple games, and this is like maybe eight years ago. Um, but um, yeah, it was part of a bundle. So, and I think I bought the bundle for like thirty forty dollars for a couple games. So, <laughs> well, and, and better news: uh, the two copies before that that were sold that were sealed were eighty eight ninety nine and eighty dollars. Man, I'm a rich man. Everyday millionaire. Bruno, the SDS <laughs> Bapper, Seal Turok Rage Wars. Look at this man, right? Maybe here. maybe if you <laughs> contact a, uh, if you contact a um, um, a claim, they'll send you the corrected version with the fixed co-op and that's worth even more. Oh, that but, might be the version that you have. <laughs> yeah. No, I think they they like did that one by via mail or something and that's why it's so rare. Yeah, yeah. but is it on a gray yeah. cartridge? Yeah, we'll never yeah, Grage Wars. I, I call it, I, well, I call it Grage Wars because it's Grage Wars. We can find, out. <laughs> we can find well, out if you just if you just open it and then take out. Yeah, the if he just opens the Bunstrapper <laughs> exclusive, <laughs> he beats the value. Oh no! Oh no! He came for pay. Oh, don't oh, do it! Don't do it! <laughs> My heart. <laughs> <laughs> Multi Master's like, do it, open it, <laughs> play that Turok. You play, it. you buy Turok to play Turok. <laughs> but that game is uh, multiplayer only, right? Yes. Which one, dude? Uh, Rage, Rage Wars. Wars. No, you can play single player. You it's got single though. player missions, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the missions. It's kind of like the events in Super Smash Brothers. But you're playing against bots, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically like Unreal Tournament. Where the campaign is basically just multiplayer, <laughs> but against bots, yeah. And the co-op is broken. You can't beat it. <laughs> no, the only the 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 part of the monkeys you you can't beat it. Though the rest you can beat. Yeah, I but think, you can't. I think you can get around it with a game shark or something. But you still can't beat it though, technically. Because right. you can't beat that mission. <laughs> Bro, that that is such a brick wall in the game, dude. That is such a. Oh, that really keeps that game from, from instead of being a notorious game, from being a, a well-remembered game, dude. Because those four-player games on the 64, man. Oh yeah, no, I love Turok 2 with the multiplayer. That shit was fun. Yeah, that, well, that one was fun too, but it wasn't. It wasn't as good as Rage Wars. No, I Rage mean, Wars. Too. I never are played Rage Wars. Are you saying um, you love Turok as well, or you love Turok 2? No, yes. like Turok 2 is in Seed of Evil, the second game. Black yes, Card. Okay. Beautiful. Um, guys, those were our games of the year. That was But amazing. we're not done. I have to give away the Terry 309 award. He couldn't be here today. He gave you one? Yeah, no, no, but I have to present one for him because he wasn't here. Terry, this is your fault. You weren't here today uh, to present your own award, so I had to do it. The Terry 309 award goes to Spectrobes. Nice. I, I knew I'd yeah. buy it. That's <laughs> well, <laughs> if he was here, he could correct me, but he's not, so let's just roll with it. That's his punishment. All right, I'm going to say the Terry 309 war goes to Valkyrie Profile You're 2, already wrong. The best I already game said it. Of oh, all I... time. According to Terry, the Terrypedia. Uh, there you go, Terry. That was for you. My, my little uh, December holiday Sonic gift. Mega Gems collection. Oh, I was going <laughs> to I was going to say he'd probably pick Mountain Blade 2. Uh Mountain that Dew. actually came out this year. <laughs> the Mountain Dew I think, Award. I Let's all Terry give a Terry 309 award. <laughs> I, I assume Terry would pick some kind of DLC as his favorite yeah. game of the year. Which one? He probably picked Smash he, Brothers. He, he I don't know. Pick the PS5 or something. As his, uh, the DLC that has all the microtransactions in it. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's give Terry's award to Banjo Kazooie. No, I think for real, his game uh, of the year is Ease Oath of Elgana. I think <laughs> I'm convince him of, to buy it again. Was um, that his favorite in the series? Yeah, it's his favorite. Yeah. Okay. I think I think it's actually Ocarina of Time. Wow, old yeah. statement, but one I can stand behind. What about the Fabrolon <laughs> Game Award? 
Um, man, he's got so many games. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. He just well, has. I the... don't think. Uh-huh. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I don't know what I was gonna say. I forgot. I was, go I was gonna say I don't think uh, Favreon would ever pick a Game of the Year award. Yeah, I'd probably say Legend like of Yagoon for him. <laughs> probably yeah, that's a good one. Probably, probably say, say I can't. I can't pick one. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Say well, since band. he made a 3DS video, I'm going to say Stella Glow because he talks about it and he gets extra points for mentioning that game. Dude, yeah, that game is sick. I love that yeah. game. Yeah. Everyone who owned a 3DS or owns a 3DS and was in the YouTube thing in 2015 or so was talking to Stella Glow and happens to love it. I've never played it, so I'm Wrong. doing myself a disservice. I... You don't even play your 3DS. But I owned one and played it in 2015. In the YouTube community? It. Yes. Okay. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> Prove it. Oh, oh <laughs> shit. Oh, I'm pretty sure I have a discussion from, from 2015 with, with me and Teddy talking about 3DS versus Wii U. So I <laughs> need receipts. That's the other rapper says, Prove it, bitch. <laughs> Alex, what's Damon's award? Uh, I don't know. It probably goes to, you know what? Fuck Damon. It's, it's Buck Bumble. <laughs> Damn it, this is your fault. <laughs> Straight, the classic Buck Bumble. Iconic. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, best game ever made. I really don't see what the big deal is about that game, dude. It's a pretty good uh, soundtrack, oh, I guess. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. Award winning. Button ma- Damon Award winning. Buck Bumble is a life changing experience. <laughs> Do you have that game, Malta? Uh, do I have that game? No, but I played it before, and it was just a bee flying around, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I are not, bro. It's 10 out of 10. <laughs> bee flying around. How many bucks did it cost? I don't know, man. This was in the early 2010s, so this was when 64 games were really, like, at their cheapest, to be honest. But did you hear that theme song? Bro, yes. I can't remember that, man. I must have been, like, 15. What's wrong with that? Uh, that, that theme song is magic. Okay, uh, I want to go out on a question. What is one game that somebody else uh, mentioned in the video that you now want to play? But you can only pick one. Oh. So uh, take a moment, think about it. Um, Buck Bumble. No. Uh, it has to be a, a nomination. <laughs> Damn um, it. I'm going to start. I, I guess I want to play AI Somnium. That sounds really cool. Um, I do like that. That kind of like heavy narrative driven experience and um I, I played a few visual novels before i've enjoyed the ones i've played time hollow is a really cool one so i think that would be up my alley all right on well i hope you enjoy it whenever you get around to it thanks me too I like ghost of tiramisu <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the game. Like ghost of teriyaki yeah, There's don't... nothing scary about Tiramisu, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, game I would like to play. Actually, yeah, I, I, in all seriousness, I, I would I would like to play that game. So, Ghost of Harakiri. <laughs> ha- Harakiri? <laughs> yes. I'll say Trails in the Sky. I'm going to do it. Mm. Do it. my deep into that one. Oh, DZ, DZ missed our first two. Um, DZ, mine was Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, and Teddy's was... Mario what? 3D All Stars. Mario 3D All Stars. Oh, uh, okay. I think I'm gonna go with Final Fantasy VII because I, first of all, you know, as much as I like uh, JRPGs, I've never completed a mainline Final Fantasy game. So, um, you know, that's on my to-do list to at least be, I mean, a one a mainline Final Fantasy game. But uh, I do want to play Final Fantasy VII. It's such an important game, you know, uh, influential uh, RPG. So. I, I just have to get around it, whether it's a remake or the original. I have to, um, at one point, you know, play that game. Yeah, I'm also going to say uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Because, you know, it's one I've been wanting to play since it came out. All right, for me, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit because I'm going to go with Mischief Makers first. And then I'm going to realize the game is short, like you guys mentioned. <laughs> or DZD mentioned, and then I'm like, man, that's not cool, good enough for me. So I'm then I'm gonna go towards Final Fantasy VII remake because I really need to play that game. I'm gonna go with uh, Super Mario All Stars, man, because even though I already have all those games, I'd love to buy it just to support Nintendo. 
Keep it sealed and never play it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy there right here. <laughs> it's it's a a gamer move right there. <laughs> buying Nintendo games is like buying uh, real estate, man. It just goes up and... <laughs> it, it does. It, it pretty much is at this point. In six months, I'm going to come back and say that's how I paid my student loans. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know all these people that the, the the a lot of people their soccer is for physical Nintendo Switch games. They're, that's why they get released with very small quantity, so they sell out quick. And they go on eBay for a hundred bucks to try to buy Turok for the Switch on eBay. Mm. I was like fifty bucks now. Come Damn. on, now. I'm still trying to buy Turok Rage Wars for a reasonable price. Oh shit! All right, DZ, what game? What about you? Uh, what was the visual novel again? AI Somnia and Files. AI Somnia. I think I'll probably play that one because I've been, like I said, I've been kind of getting into visual novels, and uh, I think that would be a an interesting. I guess, uh, not first uh, try, but like another visual novel to sink my teeth into. Oh, yeah. And by the way, I, I loved uh, Silver Case, by the way. So that's cool that you got into that one, too. Yeah, that's another good one. Right. Yeah, very weird. But, um, but then again, it's a suit of 51 game. So yeah. that's to be expected. <laughs> so Suda Suki 1 games are weird? Oh, yeah. Like, um... Oh, okay. You know, like Lollipop Chainsaw, um, <laughs> you know, No More Heroes, which that got released recently on Switch. Oh, I put 13 hours into it. There yeah. You and, um, you know, Killer is Dead. Um, he's made, like, some other, like, really weird ones out there. There's some that are Japan only and some that didn't even come out to North America, like one called... Um, I forget the name of it. It's like this one where you're like a cameraman going over like a trip oh, or Michigan something. Oh, Michigan to report from hell or something. Yeah, like there that. you go. Yeah, Michigan. Yeah. European exclusive of all places, I know. Yeah, 505 Games published that one, I think. Yeah, yeah I think it got published um, like as a limited release or something, or am I thinking about the wrong game? Um, well, a lot of, like, weird games like that that got released in Europe, a lot of them were pretty scarce, so, yeah, <laughs> like, it probably is, like, kind of expensive to get now. Oh, uh, it's definitely you can play a PAL game. You mean, you mean European exclusive games? Well, I wouldn't necessarily call them exclusives, but, you know, ones that came out in both Japan and Europe, but not North America. Oh, that makes no sense, dude. Why you limited release. Game in Europe, but yeah, not I don't... America. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's like the the way they released stuff over there is different, and I don't know. Maybe Sony of America at the time was like, I know they had this really weird phase at one point where they didn't allow like companies to publish games in North America that were like two D. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but that oh, was a thing insane. that was a that that happened. When the. Uh, I think it was during like the PS1 and maybe a yeah. little bit of PS2. It was like in that, between that awkward time because they were like, no, everything has to be 3D. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Mega Man Legends happened because they had to do that in, in order to let Sony let them make 2D Mega Man games as well. <laughs> yeah, in North America yeah. though, not yeah, Japan. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, but it was just like that was part of the deal also. It was like, okay, but like make a 3D game. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Like, there were some 2D games that did manage to come out to North America, but not many of them, though. For the PS1? Yeah. What you mean? Bomberman <laughs> World? <laughs> well, That's is a that, like... Game? Come on. Well, is that, is that, uh... Doesn't it use, like, 3D polygons, though? No, no, they're... They're, they're, they're very smooth. They look, they look 2D, like... No, I don't. I don't remember. But like I said, there are some that do make it out of there. But I just know there's a lot that that didn't come out over here. Shenmue Two on the Dreamcast. That that was Europe only. Oh yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. I have. I don't know, maybe Europe just has like a huge like boner for Shenmue. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Love that forklift. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, that about does it. Top eight cool. Bombermans confirmed for next we year, 2020. We I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen who are listeners in the audience, make sure you check out all these fine gentlemen here. They have great YouTube channels where they produce some awesome content. Uh, Alex? Can we go out on a wrap? It, could this rap be done to the tune of Donkey Kong 64 theme song? Oh, no. Well, Spencer would have to drop a beat. He might come in with Mario Bros. Underground theme, so I, I don't know if I'd leave it to him. <laughs> Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong better. Put your hands together if oh, you there want. You go. Clap, take you through this butt and nap. Yo, yeah. majority, frickin' frack, spin sir, <laughs> Malta Master 2, Chris, Amon, Bruno, and D. We're about to talk about top 10 games of 2020. <laughs> that was oh terrible. Oh, great. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, uh. Is that it? Uh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. you keep going. We'll let you know when we're done. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness, you are so fired. <laughs> <laughs> DZ did the, did the whole thing, man. That was great. Yes. That was genius. This is a button mapper anthem. Love it. <laughs> that was this the most low this energy this rap ever. Bro. That was like mumble rap. Do it. I'm, I'm gonna do it, man. Yeah, Doobie right. right now. Oh. Yo. This button mappers, what's up? <laughs> Speed the beat up, DJ. <laughs> DJ Spencer, go, bro. I'm over here and I'm with DZD. I'm freaking frag and majority. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, with Bruno. Mm, That's the mm, Super mm, Nintendo mm, mapper. Mm, I'm on the button mm, mappers. Mm, 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 mm. I'm an attacker against anybody. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Wow, he was so sad about it. He turned off his camera. Oh, oh. that's good. Though. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Careful right. that. Off your I, can, I can throw one out there. Okay. Okay. My name is Alex. I have a cat. The other day, I was wearing a hat. Okay, I, the I low energy it. award gets taken away from DZ <laughs> and gets oh! Oh, oh, Alex. Oh, <laughs> Alex kicked a DK rap and it made me take a DK nap. <laughs> I was so tired, it wasn't funny. I played Buck Bumble with all my money. Bumble. <laughs> Dude, Buck, Bumble. Get canceled, bro. <laughs> Bumble. <laughs> Buck Bumble Kickstarter 2021. Yeah. Bump to the boom to the bump to the base. <laughs> bump to the buck to the bubble. You guys need to find that guy and just invite oh, him to oh. what map. <laughs> Buck, Special guest interview. So, tell me, Mr. Buck Bumble theme song. What the, guy what the, what, the, what, the, <laughs> what exactly led you to copy the b transformation from banjo kazooie and make a whole game out of it he's like i just wrote the song man we, we... <laughs> <laughs> all right buck bumble map out confirmed thanks for joining ladies and gentlemen and fellas it was great hope to see you again next year Thank Let's you. do it. Thank you guys. Take it easy, everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Take I it wish easy. You a Merry Christmas. Merry, <laughs> Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Krampus. <laughs> Have a fucked up New Year. <laughs> That's a great way to go out. Oh, disaster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's go out on a positive note. <laughs> Legal marijuana. Uh, Woo! Spectrums! <laughs> Uh, Double Shake 2021. Woo. <laughs> That's phenomenal, guys. Hey, y'all. Don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers. <laughs>